Morning everyone! Welcome to our morning worship and prayer. Let's begin today worshiping God. We glorify your name For you are worthy You are worthy to be praised, Jesus Oh And I surrender And I will yield and I will bow down And I will live I will seek you In all my days And I will follow All your ways Cause you are my own Send me. 
me for your glory. Praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning worship and prayer. We hope you're enjoying your time in the book of Peter as we journey together and learn from what the Apostle Peter wrote. Again, this letter from 1 Peter was written by none other than Peter himself with the help of his companion, Silas. And this letter was written as an encouragement to the believers, especially to the Gentile believers, that in light of their current suffering, in light of their hardships, in light of their persecution, to continue living for God, to continue living godly lives, to continue honoring God in spite of suffering and persecution. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but He died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but He was raised to life in the Spirit. So He went and preached to the spirits in prison, those who disobeyed God long ago, when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat. Only eight people were saved from drowning in the terrible flood. And that water is a picture of baptism, which now saves you, not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now Christ has gone to heaven. He's seated in the place of honor next to God and all the angels and authorities and powers accept his authority. So again, this message was an encouragement to the churches, to the believers, that in light of their suffering and persecution, to continue living godly lives, to continue on doing good in spite of suffering. Now we see the passages that we read speak of not the Christian suffering, but speak of Christ's suffering. Here in the passages we read, we see a beautiful picture of the gospel that Jesus Christ was sent by the Father here on earth, lived the life we should have lived, died the death we should have died in our place. And three days later, He rose from the dead. And because of His life, death, and resurrection, when we put our faith in Him, when we put our trust in Him, when we receive Him in our life as Lord and Savior, then we too can enjoy eternity with God in heaven and live our life for Him here on earth. What a beautiful picture of the gospel. And in the passages we read, Peter was reminding them that it's not just continuing on doing good through suffering, but Christ's suffering brought us our greatest good. Grabe po, no? May maganda pong nadudulot ang suffering. And we see here, Christ's suffering brought us not just good, 
but our greatest good. That's what we see in the passages that we read. Jesus' suffering brought us to right standing with God. Jesus' suffering brought us to our right standing with God. In fact, 1 Peter 3.18 in the ESV English Standard Version says this, For Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. Do you believe this? When you have put your faith in Christ, you're no longer declared unrighteous, but we now have the righteousness of Christ in us. Do you believe that? Christ's righteousness for us, the unrighteousness. And when God sees us, He sees the righteousness of Christ in us. Jesus' suffering brought us to a right standing with God. From unrighteousness to righteousness. Continuing on, He now jumps on to a different topic. Verse 19, So He went and preached to the spirits in prison, this verse is a different topic, a different preaching for another day. But then in verse 20, it says, Those who disobeyed God long ago, when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat, only eight people were saved from drowning in that terrible flood. And that water is a picture of baptism, which now saves you, not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It's effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now Christ has gone to heaven. He's seated in the place of honor next to God and all the angels and authorities and powers accept his authority. You see here, Peter now recalls a very meaningful event in the Old Testament. He brings up the time of Noah. He brings up the great and terrible flood. And remember during the time of Noah in the book of Genesis, that time of the flood was a fresh start for God's people. God had been so grieved because the evil, wickedness, and sin of all mankind had been so great in the eyes of God that God thought of wiping the entire human race from the face of the earth. But we know God is gracious. God is compassionate. He is merciful even to a people who don't deserve it, that he decides to spare one family, the family of Noah. He saves them. And there, Peter says that that flood, that water from the flood, represents what we know in our time today as baptism. Now, in a Christian baptism, it's not a sprinkling of water, but in a Christian, who has put their faith in Christ. A Christian is not sprinkled with water. A Christian, a believer of Christ, is immersed in water. Yun po ang water baptism. Water baptism is a public declaration of someone's faith in Christ. And when one publicly declares his or her faith in Christ, that person is water baptized. Kapag we water baptized po ang isang mananampalataya, hindi po siya winiwisikan ng tubig, Pero ini-immerse siya sa tubig. Bakit? What does that signify? Water baptism by immersion signifies that we identify with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Kaya po ang isang tao who declares his or her faith in Christ, ini-immerse sa tubig. Kasi pag nilubog sa tubig at inahon sa tubig, we are saying we identify and we put our faith in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. That as someone is someone puts their faith in Christ, we now identify that we are dead to sin and alive in Christ. That's what it means when someone gets water baptized. Now, Peter is saying, as Jesus Christ, life, death, and resurrection has now brought us to a right standing with God. Now, he brings up the topic of water baptism. What does it mean for us today? It tells us that because we are now in right standing with God, we have new life in God, and new life in God produces new life for God. New life in God produces new life for God. We now live a new life for Him. We now live a different life for God because we have been dead to sin and alive in Christ. And that is the truth that we live every single day. Do you believe that? Do you believe that if you are in Christ, you are a new creation, 
the old has gone, the new has come. Do you believe that you are in right standing with God? Again, Jesus' suffering brought us to a right standing with God. And our new life in God will produce new life for God. I pray that we will live lives that honor God today and every single day. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for that reminder that amidst suffering, amidst persecution, Lord, your suffering brought us not just good, but your suffering brought us our greatest good. Because of your life, death, and resurrection, we now are in right standing with God. No longer unrighteous, but righteous in you. Lord, that is who we are. Help us to live that reality in everything we do, Lord, sa lahat ng gagawin namin. Lord, we pray that we will live that new life you've purchased for us on the cross. And Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters, probably for some of you here, there are things that God is calling you to repent of. Would you accept the righteousness that God has purchased for you on the cross? Maybe for some of us, you need to hear that once more. No longer righteous, no longer condemned, but righteous when you put your faith in Christ. Go ahead and live that righteous life. Lord, for those of us who haven't put our faith in you, probably you're watching this devotion for the very first time. Probably a friend invited you and shared this link to you. Probably you know you haven't put your faith in what Christ did for you on the cross. Maybe today's the day where you receive him and put your faith in him. If that is you, and you'd like to accept this free gift that God is offering, would you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I believe that I am a sinner, and I believe that you came on earth to die for sinners like me. Lord, I repent of all my sin. I receive you today as my Lord and Savior, and I believe that when I put my faith in you, I can live a new life for you. I would like to walk with you from this day on to forever. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, send us a message. We'd love to pray for you and journey with you in the next steps ahead. Wherever you are, could you raise your hand before the Lord? Lord, we thank you that our new life in you produces new life for you. Help us to live godly lives, honoring you and making disciples. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Let's continue to worship God in this place. Cause you are my only one. You are my only one. Lord, we sing and declare. Cause you are my only one. Cause you are. My only one, cause you are, we sing, cause you are my only one. Lord, you are my only one, you are my only one. I want to live for you, be glorified forever, my life will declare. Have an amazing day ahead.